since I decided to quit my day job, I was having a conversation with my partner and started describing the things that I want to be doing in my next day job. And I realized it might be a producer. I might actually want to be a producer. So I've been watching a bunch of videos online about what a producer actually does because I've produced a short film called Pizza Monster back in 2022 and it's actually about to come out very soon. I know I just said that I watched videos and started even learning what producing was but it's because the first few set of short films that I produced I didn't realize that's what I was doing. In my head, I was just like organizing some work that me and my friends could do together, specifically with Javi. He's been my collaborator since like 2018. We've made a bunch of stuff and finally he decided I have this story and I want to make it with a budget versus us just gathering on a Saturday and, you know, knocking it out in five hours. So this was like the first real producing job that I had because I had to organize a lot of people and crafty and payment and all of this stuff. So I was just learning as I went. And the reason why I started watching videos about producing is so that I can see what I missed, what mistakes I made that I didn't even know I made. But I'm hopping on a meeting right now with Tony Gapistone because I have volunteered to produce the Academy um, short film for his acting classes. So I got to go because it's 10 a.m. For this producing project, I was actually able to be a part of the producing course with Brave Maker, and I went to a rehearsal and some of the pre-production meetings. Then here I am at day one of two of the Academy short film called Infectious Theater. I have now learned that every producing experience will be different. On this one, I was one of five producers and we were, a lot of us were learning and we filled wherever was needed. This one, for example, I saw we didn't have an assigned wardrobe designer. And since I have experience being a wardrobe master in theater, I volunteered to be in charge of choosing the wardrobe as well as organizing it the day of and making sure they were all in the right clothes. I was debating whether to vlog this or not, but why not? I just got to the Greg Cohen callback for an insurance commercial and it's my first callback a first commercial callback in I have no idea how long because like in 2019 was I acting a lot I don't know I had like a really busy day job and life was crazy I don't know I don't know if I got a callback like specifically a commercial callback in 2019 or when it was but here I am and as I was driving I realize, guess who didn't print her updated resume again? And guess who didn't print a photo? Oh, I know that they're not going to ask for it. Like, I know that. But I just want to be able to walk in and it be an option. Because you never know that client. It might be their first time they've ever cast anything. So they want that feeling of like what they've seen in movies. I am so glad I got here really early. My callback is at 1035 and it's 1012 right now. I've been here for 12 minutes and I was circling and circling and circling around for parking. And then I finally found this parking spot that says no stopping, no parking. But then when I really looked at it, it said Friday and Saturday and today is Wednesday and I'm going to take all my stuff just to be safe after this callback i'm actually going to redwood city because i am testing out producing and i'm currently producing the brave maker uh i'm one of the producers learning how to produce for the brave maker academy short film you know what i'm excited about i'm excited to maybe see somebody i know i'm wearing what i wore um during the audition because those were the directions for my agency and oh you know what i'm gonna stop talking because i want to read everybody else's characters because I, I think we might be paired up with people so I just want to make sure that I know everything that's going on so since I do have still 20 22 minutes until my time over there I'm gonna take I don't know five to ten minutes right now and read the whole casting because in the casting they sent me it was my roles but also everybody else's roles so I'm gonna shut up and do that I expected it would happen that I would see somebody I knew and I did. I saw Karen and Rosie, both actresses that I don't think I've ever worked with Karen, but I've definitely seen her at like MDT events because we're with the same agency. And then I talked to other actresses, but the audition process was so nice. The director and the producer were in the room and they like both got up and shook my hands, which in auditions, you don't really get that. Like you don't really 
get people that stand up when you come into the room and shake your hands and are excited to talk to you. And then Greg, the casting director was there. It was just really chill and fun and they had us do it a bunch of different ways. I just had a good time. So I really hope I get cast. And now not only because of course I want to do a job and get paid and have fun, but I really want to work with that producer and that director again. Or period. I have to send over food orders for today for everybody and it's only 11 a.m. and the food is going to be for people or like 4 or 5 p.m. but we need to get everybody's like allergies or preferences in. The deadline was 10 a.m. for everybody to let me know what they wanted and right now I'm sending an email to a different producer to let them know what the food order is going to be because they're going to order it. I was in charge of organizing like what we're going to order. For day two, since we had pictures of the set to match, I arrived early and I just used the photos to see where I could get started and decorating or organizing or whatever and seeing what things needed to be assigned to other people. Another thing I noticed that I helped find a solution for that I know will not always be possible due to budget is get food for everyone. A lot of the people were coming from their day jobs and even though they were asked to come having already had dinner, I knew that was really hard for many people because call time was like five or six for a lot of them. These were mostly evening shoots and one of the other producers was able to get food donated um, so people were fed people actually had dinner if they wanted it tony does do a good job though at making sure that there's water and some kind of crafty available for these filming dates okay i just finished being a producer on the brave maker academy short film and i have to say as a producer i was the first one here and last one to go well tony was here but i got here at 2 30 and it's 10:59, and I am leaving and Tony is actually still up there and the last one to go it's been so much work it feels like I think even more work than it's gonna feel ever because I'm new to everything but the team that we worked with today well this entire process was really good I know I'm still like a little baby tiny producer with this minimal experience that I've had but I have to say, I have really loved being behind the camera and learning so much about what actually happens when making films or whatever projects on camera because I have found a new appreciation for everybody. And now I understand people may be getting paid different amounts in all the different positions, but like everybody is essential. Everybody is so important. Like it will not function the same and sometimes it will not function at all if like one or two people are missing. So I just, you know, I love that, that I have had like that appreciation because it makes me love humans even more. At the same time though, I do not know if producing is for me. I don't know. I think I need a little bit more experience to figure it out if I actually want to keep doing this. But something that I do know is for me is acting. And if you want to see a behind the scenes vlog of a short film that I was in called San Francisco Blues, it's right here. I talk about how I booked it and how you can see it.